Hi guys, uh, we are here today to discuss uh, MCQs of the recently concluded uh, FMG July 2023 exam. Uh, tough luck is one way I can or one word that I can use to describe it at the moment. But uh, I am here to then uh, simplify things and uh, I'll also request you to share me a couple of options uh, which if you find are incorrect or were not the way uh, the current set of questions that are provided to you at the moment. Uh, it's If it is not the way it was actually asked in the exam. So this is on uh, the basis of the feedback that I've got and uh, we can get started. Uh, hi, Dr. Uh, Samira, Medicoji, uh, Javed. So we can get going and uh, let's uh, focus on the questions at hand. Let's, uh, as they say, rock the scene. Uh, hi, Rishu, Rochet, uh, adenocarcinoma. That's a... <laughs> Uh, a little, I would say, atypical name to keep. Jai Hind, uh, Amers, and uh, tips I'll be providing. So let's focus at the job at hand. And the job at hand is to recall the question as accurately as possible. Okay, thank you, Vinod, uh, for the input regarding the question being the same language. So I'll just replicate and say uh, the date on the, on the slide. This is a 33-year-old woman. She's being evaluated for excessive daytime sleepiness and forgetfulness. Obviously, if somebody is not going to sleep properly, there's bound to be forgetfulness. That's valid for even you guys also. If you went for exam without you know sleeping properly for one week before the exam, there's bound to be forgetfulness. Then body mass index is 43. So we're talking about morbid obesity. You know, anything more than 30 is obesity. Anything more than 40 is morbid obesity. So, konsa investigation karenge? Okay, so I think uh, the investigation is polysomnography, Dr. Aparna. But anyway, let's evaluate. Uh, morbid obesity, BP is on the higher side. That can be explained by any person who's obese. And, uh, okay, short neck. So, morbid obesity, fine. I, I'll add the word short neck. That's great. Uh, that's a welcome addition to the literature that I have. And uh, the patient is hypertensive. And the most important thing in this question is that the uh, patient is having hypoxia with elevated levels of carbon dioxide. I mean, every time you see a question having ABG report, you should right away be working out that the patient is having uh, uh, respiratory acidosis since uh, there is an increase in the carbon dioxide in the body. And then you need to work out a couple of options. Uh, a couple of students have mentioned that there was even Cushing syndrome in the option. So I'll just add that. So I think it was uh, narcolepsy, but still anyway, uh, let's work out the options, right? Uh, I have kept Cushing also as one of the possibilities. Now, obstructive sleep apnea is the answer kyun nahi ho sakta hai, uh, is primarily because of the fact that obstructive sleep apnea should be having a presence of point number one. Uh, uh, presence of snoring. I mean, as I've described, obstructive sleep apnea when the patient sleeps, the the tractor because the patient would be, you know, snoring so loudly that it's it looks like a vehicle running in the house. And apart from loud snoring, there would be apneic episodes also present. So none of them were given in the question. So I can rule out option number D. And then uh, when it comes to central sleep apnea in a patient, unlikely because central sleep apnea means uh, it's called as ondine curse. You know, in earlier times, we used to hear stories, ki, Admi soega to, you know, the person would die. There was a curse given by a god to a person. And uh, this was ki, when you will sleep, to that's because the respiratory center will go into underdrive. And if the person will be in this particular case experiencing shortness of breath, but this shortness of breath will be explained if, if the person will sleep nocturnal. Here, he's not talking about uh, the person having shortness of breath at any point of time, one. And second, he's talking about sleepiness at daytime. He's not talking about that patient is having shortness of breath at nighttime. So the point is, we are ruling out B. Okay, fine. Somebody said con syndrome also, so I'll keep that in option. But anyway, I think most of you would have been working uh, working out between either the possibility of narcolepsy versus obesity, hypoventilation syndrome, considering the fact that uh, uh, obesity is given in this question and respiratory acidosis is given in this question. The, the correct answer for the first one for uh, the current uh, MCQ on the slide is obesity hypoventilation syndrome. And if you're saying, sir, ki kyu iska answer narcolepsy nahi ho sakta hai, the reason why narcolepsy nahi ho sakta because narcolepsy is not associated with development of respiratory acidosis, which was an ABG report given in this question. I mean, most of the time, whenever a question on narcolepsy is given, he'll talk about guy having frequent accidents or when he's driving a bike or he's operating a machinery, he had some kind of accident. So that's the 
the previous uh, questions i would say so i'll i'll try to you know incorporate a bit of data regarding other options as well so uh, i mean that's 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 what i'm supposed to do i am trying to uh, tell you that the question can be solved by exclusion and uh, yes sr let me know the options which are available and the best way for diagnosis of this condition is polysomnography in polysomnography we'll be checking out uh, the ecg of the patient eeg emg eogs lots of eees now ecg emg eog electroocculography so i think if you focus on uh, the video of obstructive sleep apnea that's where i've explained this fact uh, the diagnosis of this particular case is obesity hypoventilation syndrome and the diagnosis can be confirmed by doing a polysomnography in a patient so uh, yep i agree it would be a mixed bag uh, some questions are you know a little i would say the language of the question is always tricky i mean that's how it has been in all these years but they are solvable i'll 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 say uh, check sleep pattern exactly doc the sleep pattern would be polysomnography which which should be done in these patients okay so uh, this is uh, uh, pequenian syndrome for those and yeah sr if you can just comment on the options if you're saying it is investigation that was asked apart from polysomnography or sleep pattern any other investigation if you can just quickly comment so i'll wait for 15 seconds uh, people were saying that uh, in case it was a couple of options mentioned so great great okay sr so i think we sorted for the first one for today it was obesity hypoventilation sleep study would be working it out for us great it was about diagnosis so shaukat i think then uh, it's pretty straightforward the answer to this question is option number a considering baki maine rule out kar diye main fir se fast bol raha hu for those who have joined in b kyon nahi hai kyunki b would be having shortness of breath when the person will sleep uh, the the isko google karna bhi on dine kars even you know uh, as kids when our mothers used to tell us stories they used to always talk about a story in indian mythology also ki when the person was cursed by god ki jab tu soega to teri death ho jayegi to sota nahi tha wo raja that is on dying curse basically that central sleep apnea then narcolepsy does not have respiratory acidosis that's why it can be ruled out and osa should be having loud snoring present so yes dr shaukat thank you for the input we sorted with the first one and answer was a we move on to the second one for today and he says all of the following will be showing a hypokalemia except so uh, since is talking about renal tubular acidosis what you basically need to do is understand the various varieties of rtas and the bottom line is that all the varieties of renal tubular acidosis will be having a hypokalemia but the one which is rta4 will always be having a hyperkalemia present the reason is mainly that uh, the basic system by which the protons should be excreted the, the system by which the protons should be excreted would not be working so we would be having a presence of it's an except question guys so hypokalemia is a feature of rta1 hypokalemia is a feature of rta2 and more importantly hypokalemia would also be encountered in patients having ureterosigmoidostomy you see uh, another way to solve this mcq if you could not solve it ureterosigmoidostomy will be having metabolic acidosis and if you have metabolic acidosis then ph and potassium as a inverse you know uh, i mean there is a concomitant metabolic acidosis and along with this because you are diverting you know the the ureter to the sigmoid column the patient there can be a secretory diarrhea also occurring in these patients and that can explain the hypokalemia component in these patients the correct answer for the current one on the slide is option number c that is rta4 has resistance to aldosterone there is a inability to excrete hydrogen ions the answer to this one is rta4 and every time when we study regarding reno i mean the point is if they are putting up three options of rta then the questions answer will also be hidden between the three options of renal tubular acidosis only and uh, rta4 as i've explained i'll just zoom it at once again is basically resistance to aldosterone there is inability to acidify the urine so that will make it uh, much more easier for us to work out so answer to question number 2 is option number c okay milan uh, thanks for that comment in case you were able to crack questions that is really really nice to hear so we are sorted with the second question as well anybody has any uh, variations of this question please let me know if there some changes in options i'll wait for 15 seconds because this is a, a session where i am also inviting inputs from you you guys who have actually sat for the exam so it would be injudicious or improper on my part to just force my point across and say okay this is an answer to a question kyunki paper aap logo ne diya so if it is same to same cool man so uh <laughs> yeah yeah i agree i agree uh, sr you made a very valid point uh, road traffic accident bhi lag raha tha 
this is a bit of lacune this is a bit of lacune in in our system that they should be giving full form so cool cool but point taken i agree to you honestly speaking i mean i did not think of that but good that you thought of this fact so yeah but uh, that's how things are merciless system so we need to uh possible tell us which were pyq okay doctor so i'll let, I'll let you know which which ones are the pyqs and uh, i think we are coming on to a pyq now so mayur uh, stay with me on this one and let me know any modifications in the stem of the question uh, we are having a child who's having a two week history of not feeding well with excessive irritability uh, most of the people told me that there was history of tuberculosis in sister it could be brother or sister i don't know i mean it could be like uh, Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, SR, oh, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, I remember you did mail me. So, thank you. Uh, there is history of tuberculosis in the sister. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Before we comment on the answer, please help me recall the uh, the, the status of the, uh, the the stem of the question also. Was, was it a child or was it an adult presenting with, you know, irritability and not feeding well? Sister was having TB. This is, I mean, this was the main hit that he's talking about tubercular meningitis. And that would help us uh, nail the diagnosis of this question also as having uh, the classical findings of carb coagulum, low sugar, elevated protein, lymphocytosis. So cool, uh, Milan, uh, thanks for the input. Uh, it is child who's been brought and the sister is being treated for tuberculosis. Okay, okay. History of taking treatment. So I'll just add that word. History of, history of taking treatment for pulmonary tuberculosis in the sister. So this is tuberculum meningitis. And uh, I am confused between uh, high protein and low sugar. Uh, okay, Sai, the point is, this concept is that protein is you know, because it's a chronic infection. So gross elevation of protein is called carb-web coagulum. Bulte hai, and the sugar decreases because of uh, the consumption of the sugar by, by the security system. The correct answer for this one would be lymphocytosis because chronic infection and there's going to be low sugar and elevated protein. And there's a basic table, you know, I think if hot favorite of uh, these MCI people that every time they're going to ask you either, I say this every time, you know, if you asked the last viral meningitis, then this time was tubercular meningitis, you asked tubercular, you asked the next time tubercular, you asked the next time viral. So he, he will keep on, uh, keep on uh, you know, changing between this. Uh, Ekta, I cannot see your question at the moment completely because here kuch icons hai bich mein. Okay. Chloride decreases in tubercular meningitis. Ekta, mail me at marvamedicine at gmail.com. Once I'm done with this recall, I'll reply you instantaneously. I'll repeat the email ID, marvamedicine at gmail.com. Just copy paste and send me the, uh, the, uh, the question. I'll let you know. Chloride. You know, uska active transport hota hai. Active transport is hampered in... Uh, the inflammation with respect to the coronal plexus. So, uh, I mean, that statement, I'll write it for you. Okay, G, let's move on. Neck stiffness mentioned. Okay, cool, cool. So, that makes it uh, even much more easier for me. There was meningeal sign and neck stiffness given in the question. So, we all agree to the fact that this would be a previous year question. It's just that they've toggled between. It's like a toggle switch they have. Tubercular is a viral, viral meningitis. Tubercular and viral ke mein ghoomte rahte. And sometimes in between, they can introduce a googly of uh, uh, bacterial meningitis as well. But you guys can solve it very easily on the basis of neutrophils for acute pyogenic meningitis, turbid CSF. So, I think... Uh, I mean, all of you are brilliant chaps. I don't need to explain pyogenic meningitis at the moment. That would be one of the easiest things that you guys can crack. So let's move on to the fifth one, which is uh, much more easier. ABCD2 scoring, as you are all aware, will predict the conversion of chances of transient ischemic attack into development of stroke. So A is age of the patient, B is blood pressure, and C is the clinical features. It is not the history of stroke. It is the clinical features of the stroke. So we are sorted for question number five. The correct answer for this one is option number C. Great job, guys. I think I got CCC in the comments immediately. ABCD2 score is age, BP, clinical feature diabetes varietals or d2 because d may diabetes be hota hai and we also take into consideration the duration component diabetes we consider karna hota hai or duration of symptoms we consider karna hota hai it is gonna be <coughs> a, it's gonna be a history and at the same time i mean uh, the point is it's clinical features which are present hanji hanji i mean you know some some easier ones are there to be picked up so uh, is TIA based on MRI findings or on the based of symptoms? Nisar, it is based on symptoms, no? It is based on symptoms. Clinical signs, if there is a stroke, then symptoms will come. 
Okay. Thank you, Modi ji. If it worked for you, cool. Good to he good to have you back again. <clears throat> Okay, ji. let's move on to the next one. We have a 60-year-old person. Uh, guys, I want suggestions from the stem of the question as well. Is it a correct stem? There's a patient with right-sided hemiparesis for last three hours. The blood pressure of the patient is elevated and the CT head is showing a hyperdensity. Uh, this means that the patient is having a brain hemorrhage. He's having an intracranial hemorrhage. And in anybody having an elevated BP, and that to a brain hemorrhage, I would not even dream of doing a thrombolysis in this patient. There are two things which are straight away saying, shouting in our face, don't do thrombolysis. Why? Because it's a brain hemorrhage. The biggest side effect of thrombolysis is development of brain hemorrhage. And more importantly, the blood pressure is elevated, considering the fact that uh, there are two things which are shouting at us in our face, saying, Ki, bhai, thrombolysis nahi karna Pala point, brain hemorrhage present, documented, hyperdensity on the left-hand side, close to the pool. Point number two, elevated blood pressure. So even if you say that, no, sir, the CT was not exactly the same. It was some kind of ischemic stroke. Even in case of ischemic stroke, guys, we do not go in for thrombolysis if the BP is elevated. So great, Jane. Uh, thanks for the inputs for uh, whether the language of the question is correct. And I did work hard with my students uh, uh, who have, uh, you know, thankfully spent time with me, just like you guys are doing at the moment to help me out with the options for the questions as well. So cool, we are sorted for this one. See, that's what I'm saying. I mean, those say, say, see, they see, they straight, straight, say, you're So, I mean, he will give a mixed bag, dega, yaar, ki, matab, wo char number, which I have told you, the word sign is a little difficult. Ho sakta hai. But then, if you look at three, tubercular meningitis, that's piece of cake for you guys. When you look at, uh, I mean, ABCD2 score, you guys know this. Then is uh, thrombolysis is going to be not done in patient with elevated blood pressure plus a brain hemorrhage. So we can sort it. And option with tension, pneumothorax. Uh, Nadim, I think, aapka chat thoda peechha chal rahe. But uh, in case it is Nadim, do let me know. Uh, tension, pneumothorax is being talked for which question. I'll just wait for a second. Engorged veins. Okay. Uh, Nadim, uh, if it's a separate question from the one that is on the slide, uh, then please wait for a while. I will talk about multiple other questions as well, which have been asked. Yeah, in case you are are uh, pointing at a different question, please mail me at marvamedicine at gmail.com and I'll be glad to assist you. Uh, beta blockers, good for diabetes and for long term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is ACE inhibitors doctor, which we'll be using in uh, diabetics patients, no? Because to slow down the process of... Uh, progression of diabetic nephropathy. We don't use beta blockers there. And uh, manitol therapy was also given. Yeah, yeah, edema management. No, doctor, that is edema management only. Na? Manitol to wohi ho gaya na. You know, I did not write manitol because some people said manitol likha tha, kai logo ne bola anti-edema treatment. So that is okay. Okay, uh, please explain question number uh, six. Uh, doctor, the patient is presented. I mean, it
Uh, hi guys, I'm back. Uh, there was some unexpected, uh, I would say, knocked out of the system because of uh, some technical issues. But anyway, I'm back. So let me know uh, in case my audio part and the visual part is perfect and we can get started once again. Uh, agreed, agreed. Uh, Okay, guys, so I think we can get started. Uh, my suggestion to you guys who are talking about how to approach, uh, you have everything in your mobile phone. Another option would be on my YouTube channel in case you go through the MCQs, the, the live session especially, you will be able to understand things relatively better. I mean, uh, there are a lot of uh, previous year sessions that I've taken, which are not only with respect to PYQ answers, it is much more technical than that. And I've tried to explain things. Okay. Fine. So we sorted for question number six, which was on stroke. This was a uh, this was a patient with brain hemorrhage, and uh, we are not going to do a thrombolysis in this case. And we can move on to the seventh one. Uh, do let me know if uh, the dose and the weight of the patient is fine. This particular chap, uh, yes, medico contraindication to thrombolysis: systolic more than one eighty five, diastolic more than one hundred and ten. Okay. So I think we sorted for this one. Uh, uh, moving to seventh one, we have a 60-year-old patient with acute ischemic stroke. The doctors advise thrombolysis with delta place and the weight of the patient is 80 kg. How much is the dose to be given stat? Uh, you see, streptokinase is always given in the form of infusion over one hour, but delta place, some part of it can be given as a bolus shot and the remaining part can be given uh, subsequently uh, uh, to the patient uh, in the form of an infusion. So 10% of the total dose, 10% of the total dose needs to be given in the form of a bolus. So if you do it, you will be able You see the actual dose is 0.9 milligram per kilogram of body weight. But for calculation purposes, I'm taking it to be one. So uh, actual dose will work out to be total of 72 milligrams for the patient if I use the formula and 10% of this needs to be given directly. So the closest answer for this would be eight. Uh, even by guesswork only because most of the MCQs that are asked in the exam, uh, mathematical ones, are either going to be a one-step division or are going to be a one-step uh, multiplication. So I think we can solve it there. This would be total of 10% uh, that would be required. So it's 10%, doctor, it's not a 10 milligram dose. It would be 10% of that would be given initially. That would be 8 milligrams. Okay, so we are sorted with uh, question number seven. Uh, Bharat, it is not 10 milligrams. It would be a uh, total of, uh, because the dose is 0 0.9. So actually it will work out to be 7.2. Okay, so we are sorted with question number seven. I think the dose, etc. was the same. 80 milligram was itself given. I hope it was not 100 kgs because a couple of people are saying uh, uh, 10 milligram, 10 for that. Okay, so... Uh, uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, this patient is presented with a movement disorder with development of cognitive and emotional problems. Uh, every time we read about a movement disorder with cognitive issues, one of the important disorders that comes in the mind can never be Alzheimer's disease, which can be ruled out immediately because Alzheimer does not have a movement disorder present. Uh, because the age of the patient is given to be 50 years of age, again, Alzheimer's could be developing at 70 or 80 years of age. So very, very unlikely. Fragile X and will mostly be a presentation of a child with mental retardation. So again, age can be used to rule it out. So we are left between Frederick's ataxia and Huntington's chorea. And when we look at uh, the data which is present here, milligram in all options. Sanjee sir, I will give you a milligram. Not a problem sir. So milligram is there. Obviously, it is implied that we are total 10% but it would be 8 milligrams. Okay. Uh, the correct answer for question number 8 is a combination of movement disorder and tremors in the hands. Okay, fine. Thank you for the input. I'll just add that word tremors in the hand apart from movement disorder. Uh, repeat of trinucleotides was present. Uh, uh, Dr. Stuti, can you mention regarding where was this repeat mentioned? Was it in the options or was it in the theory of the question? Please just mention either stem or the options and that will make it easier for me. The correct answer for this presentation is Huntington's chorea. It's a neurodegenerative disorder and options may. Okay, so it's not, yeah, CAG repeats. No? My next question, Huntington's chorea was in the options or trinucleotide repeats was in the options? Okay, fine. This CAG repeats, trinucleotide repeats was given in the theory component. 
cool got it got it so i i i have got the gist of the question the basic point is he is talking about a 50 year old chap that's the usual age of presentation of huntington's chorea with combination of tremors in the hands so we start thinking in terms of parkinsonism but it's too early for parkinsonism to present at 50 plus uh, the aspect of cognitive issues that are coming in the emotional issues that are coming in that nails the diagnosis plus if he himself mentioned trinucleotide repeats in the theory component then it will become relatively easier for you Okay, ji. Fragile nahi tha, uh, Nadeem ne bola. Option bata do, yaar. Parkinsonism was in the option. Okay. Fine, Disha. Thank you so much for the input. And I'll remove Fragile X from the options and incorporate, in this case, PD, Parkinson's disease. But that, anyway, would not change the answer to the question anyway. We are still going by Huntington's chorea because Parkinsonism presents a little later. Plus, you need to have bradykinesia, no? The most important diagnostic feature for Parkinson's disease is bradykinesia. You cannot make a diagnosis of Parkinsonism without bradykinesia in the patient. TBR is the mnemonic for it, tremors, bradykinesia, and rigidity. So uh, we are sorted for question number eight as well. This would be Huntington's chorea uh, based on the inputs that are provided. And now we come to one of the easiest questions that was asked in the exam. He gave us Beck's trial. He said, what JVP findings is expected in a chap who's having muffled heart sounds, plus he's having hypotension and raised JVP. So the moment we read Beck's triad, we know that he's talking about cardiac tamponade and the moment we know it is cardiac tamponade because the filling of blood in the heart will be hampered. It will cause the absent wide descent. One of the hot favorite MCQs of the MCA exam because this will remain on YouTube. So please be patient. I know you know the answer to this question, but this is for the, the, the younger generation who will be seeing it after you. So I'm just putting in the data. There are two standard questions of the MCI people which they always love to repeat. One is steep X and steep Y, and second one is steep X and absent Y. They have, you know, alternatively asked them steep X and steep Y, that's constrictive pericarditis, and steep X and absent Y is the answer to our question, that is cardiac tamponade. This would be option number B as a spot on answer. So uh, JVP anyway is again an important topic, which is recommended to be remembered. Uh, cool, cool. I'm getting B as an answer from everybody in this particular case, cool. Okay, ji. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Uh, Nadeem, agar aapko, uh, Nadeem, aapne mention kiya direct questions, to please mereko mark karke bhej dana. That would be really, really so nice of you. I'll repeat my email is marvamedicine at gmail.com. Okay, ji. Cool. Let's, we sorted for ninth. Let's move on to the tenth one. And I would, uh, sir, it should be useful for the entire domain. And yeah, cardiology. I mean, because cardio wala part, most people skip, so I have starting my So, I will go Hi, Shahid. Uh, good evening. Let's move on to the next one. SR has given the answer also. And uh, we are now focusing on screen cannot be seen. Uh, what you need to do, Jitin, is uh, close down your YouTube and start it again. Sometimes the resolution part can be settled because of that. Okay. 65 year old man brought to the hospital with sudden speech issues. When he's speaking, it is not making any sense. Matab, nai nai words create kar hai wo. It is nonsensical grammar, though he can speak quickly. I mean, that is one word that everybody vouched for. Ki wo, he can speak quickly. That means fluency in the patient is preserved. This also tells us that the patient's Broca's area is not affected. So I can rule out option number A, motor aphasia right away. Please let me know the language of the question. Since the patient is not able to, you know, speak proper grammar because the patient is not, he's doing jargon speech. You know, the language of the question is that the patient is doing jargon speech, which tells you the fact that the problem in this patient is in the Wernicke's area. So, Wernicke's area is for understanding. Wernicke's area is for comprehension. If you say something, उसके मन में जो आ रहा है वो उल्टा सीधा कुछ भी बोलता रहेगा आपको स्टार्टिंग में लगेगा कि आप किसी शिज़ोफ्रेनिया वाले पेशेंट को डील कर रहे हो कि कुछ भी बोले जा रहा है रैंडम बातें कर रहा है नए-नए वर्ड्स कोइन कर रहा है बट देन यू विल रियलाइज दैट देयर इज अ प्रॉब्लम इन द सीएनएस इशू ऑफ दिस पेशेंट एंड कंसीडरिंग ही कैन स्पीक व्हाटएवर बट डजंट मेक सेंस कि इट्स वर्निकेज एरिया डैमेज एंड वर्निकेज एरिया डैमेज विल नेल डाउन द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ दिस पेशेंट टू बी ऑप्शन नंबर सी दैट इज फ्लुएंट एफेजिया फ्लुएंट एफेजिया इज अदर नेम फॉर रिसेप्टिव डिस्फेजिया I, I presume receptive dysphasia word was not given in the options. Receptive dysphasia as a terminology was not given. If it was, let me know. Wernicke's was there. Okay, so Wernicke's was in the options. So fine, doctor. I mean, whether we call option number C as Wernicke's lesion 
or we call it fluent aphasia or we call it receptive dysphasia the all the three things would mean the same okay adenocarcinoma got your point it's a direct uh, wernicke's uh, area so uh, that that makes it uh, relatively easier for us to come to the correct answer for this particular question okay okay right thank you raju for the input as well so uh, answer to question number 10 is option number c uh, pretty understandable a uh, question primarily because usne khud hi bol diya ki patient bol pa raha hai but he is not able to but whatever he is saying is not making sense which makes the answer uh, uh, easy uh, let me know if 11th was there in the options uh, uh, i mean whether 11th was there or not short term diabetes control i mean this was a random surprise uh, uh, dr shivangi you have a lot of time at your disposal at the moment so i'll take a separate session for that today let's just do a quick recall at the moment hi dipanshu uh, this question was not there in the options okay so uh, i'm just removing this one short term diabetes control no issues let's move on to the next one uh, a very interesting one in korea b okay i've removed it i've removed it okay the korea part was huntington's korea doctor that we have already solved no that we have already solved that would be option number d okay let's uh, work out to the next one scissoring gate uh, where do we get uh, scissoring gate yeah wernicke is the answer issue scissoring gate is seen in patients who are having these are children with special needs a uh, lots of time you would have seen children who might have had birth asphyxia and because of this they would be slow to perform their speech would be hampered these children suffer from what is called as uh, okay so it was spastic cerebral palsy that causes a scissoring gait in a patient and uh, because of the scissoring gait present uh, we'll have to come to the conclusion uh, somebody mentioned lurching gait was in was it a question guys uh, doctor please meant the mention the complete data was it a question was it an option scissoring gait hota kya to spastic cerebral palsy mein milta hai hota kya hai it's an upper motor neuron lesion and this upper motor neuron lesion will cause a adductor spasm so the question was based on your ability to diagram was not there diagram i have put from myself to explain to you scissoring gait would mean ki jaise canchi ka scissor ka part hai na ki cross ja raha hai so there is a adductor spasm in the thighs of the patient and because of the adductor spasm in the thighs he is basically putting up a two two step two step question first he wants you to understand that there is a problem in the patient which is a upper motor neuron lesion that is spastic cerebral palsy which will cause loss of inhibitory control and cause increased firing in the nerves causing adductor spasm now the medial part of the thigh is supplied by the opto obturator nerve the correct answer for this particular question was uh, option number c yes scissoring gait the correct answer is obturator nerve i'll explain it again guys this is not a lower motor neuron lesion first of all it's not a lower motor neuron lesion it's not something like a uh, like a foot drop that you're going to get in a person who's suffering from leprosy where nerves are damaged in this particular case the concept is that there is a adductor spasm no doctor it's not inferior gluteal nerve adductor spasm will develop when there is increased firing occurring in the obturator nerve which would be supplying the medial components so <laughs> some were having lurching gait okay fine fine so that's a interesting input that is coming up i mean for the lurching gait coming in from dillenburg gait coming in so anyway i'll i'll keep that i'll keep that okay but uh i think sir there are two different questions uh, that are being mixed up one is the trendelenburg gait question maybe a patient is having some pelvic abnormality because of which and the second is this classical one where these four options were present so i would go by what my students have given in the recall that scissoring gait related to increased firing again saying it once again guys it's not a lower motor neuron lesion it's an upper motor neuron lesion still we talking about a nerve why because there would be adductor spasm developing in upper motor neuron lesion so this would be obturator nerve as an answer absolutely raju so two different inputs and in case i get an opportunity to uh, talk about that carcinoma uh, that ovarian cyst question i'll try to handle that also we sorted for question number 12 and uh, thank you tarun for the kind inputs and let's move on to the next one which was a easy one uh, i can just quickly uh, uh, move through this dialysis dementia the pathologist is talking about it the medicine chap is talking about a beta 2 amyloid is uh, dialysis dementia and a beta amyloid is alzheimer's disease transthyretine would be cerebral amyloid angiopathy 
मीन बहुत बार बहुत बार पूछ चुके हैं तो आई डोंट थिंक सो वी नीड टू डिबेट मच अबाउट इट द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस वन वुड बी ए बीटा टू अमाइलोइड यप यप सो ओके मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट वन फोर्टीन वन सेज एंटीबॉडी सीन इन एक्यूट इन्फ्लोमेटरी या 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 डॉक्टर इट्स नॉट मैक्रोग्लोबिलिन ना इट इज माइक्रोग्लोबिलिन समबडी मेंशनड मैक्रोग्लोबिलिन आई विल क्लेरिफाई दिस फॉर यू इट इज बीटा टू माइक्रोग्लोबिलिन ये इतना छोटा होता है व्हाई बीटा टू माइक्रोग्लोबिलिन अक्यूमुलेट्स इज बिकॉज़ जो डायलिसिस का जो फिल्टर होता है ना यार उसके थ्रू वो एक्सक्रीट नहीं हो पाता इट्स बीटा टू माइक्रोग्लोबिलिन इट्स नॉट मैक्रोग्लोबिलिन ये मैक्रो नहीं है समबडी वाज सेइंग बी तो मैं क्लेरिफाई कर रहा हूं इट इज बीटा टू माइक्रोग्लोबिलिन ये बेसिकली क्यों एक्यूमुलेट होता है बिकॉज इट डज नॉट गेट फिल्टर्ड थ्रू द पोर्स व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट इन द फिल्टर ऑफ द डायलिसिस मशीन व्हाट कीप्स ऑन एक्यूमुलेटिंग एक्यूमुलेटिंग एंड कॉजेस कार्पल टनल सिंड्रोम एंड कॉजेस डेवलपमेंट ऑफ डायलिसिस डिमेंशिया सो आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन नंबर ए आई होप सर कांसेप्ट क्लियर हो गया ओके मूविंग टू 14 ही टॉक्ड अबाउट एक्यूट इन्फ्लेमेटरी डीमाइलेटिंग पॉलीन्यूरोपैथी दैट इज बेसिकली गुलियन बारे सिंड्रोम आल्सो ए बीटा टू एम लिखा था ओके okay so a beta 2 m would be considered as this one only we took it as two different options micro and macroglobulin okay okay so what you are saying is it was written like this a beta 2 and a beta 2 m am i right for this question guys let me know let me know am i right in saying one versus two a beta 2 and a beta 2 m no macro no micro Okay, so he's a smart guy. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. So we'll we'll correct it. But yeah, A beta two is the correct version for this one. And let's move on to the so move on the next one. Anti-diuretic hormone question. Doc, that would be a physiology one. So we can we can move on for this one. Guillain-Barré syndrome, guys, is gonna be a disease where the disease is gonna progress over twenty-eight days. If you look at the Brighton criteria, I mean. गुलियन बारे सिंड्रोम में जो वीकनेस का प्रोग्रेशन होता है वो वीकनेस का जो प्रोग्रेशन है दैट विल बी ओवर लार्ज नंबर ऑफ डेज सो इट कैन नॉट बी इम्यूनोग्लोबुलिन एम बिकॉज आईजीएम तो यार एक या दो दिन का इलनेस हो तब डेवलप होता है ना व्हेन इट्स गोना बी वीक्स का इलनेस अकरिंग इन अ पर्सन वीक्स का हफ्तों का इलनेस अकरिंग इन अ पर्सन देन वी विल हैव टू टेक इनटू कंसीडरेशन इम्यूनोग्लोबुलिन जी The correct answer for fourteen is option number A. The logic to be remembered is only that uh, Guillain-Barré syndrome is the uh, is a uh, uh, example of autoimmune phenomenon, a type two hypersensitivity reaction, and this type two hypersensitivity reaction would be based on immunoglobulin G. So yes, medical G, you perfectly right. Twelve hours to twenty eight days is the duration of progression. So because it's hafta na long 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 illness, so that's why it is immunoglobulin G. So Jishu, uh, that happens lots of time. You. There is, uh, you tend to rely on your instinct. That's what I always say. If you watch the live sessions on my YouTube channel, you you will realize, or on Prep Ladder channel, uh, my my sessions on Prep Ladder channel, you'll notice that I always focus on exclusion exclusion skills. Yes, doctor. Even if it is acute, no, no. वो तो ठीक है सर मैं समझ गया डॉक्टर साहब कि आप acute से पकड़ रहे हो ना. But then the concept is it's a whole disease. Acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy is a illness spanning over weeks. So it would be immunoglobulin G. एग्री अपर्णा आई एग्री टू आई मीन वो वो जानता है कि आप एक्यूट वर्ड पे फोकस करोगे इट्स द ओवरऑल इलेस दैट मैटर्स ओके जी बाय अगले क्वेश्चन पे मुझे इनपुट्स देना मतलब बहुत ही वेरिएबल इनपुट्स हैव कम सो दैट्स व्हाई आई वुड लाइक यू टू टेल मी कोई बात नहीं कोई बात नहीं एक दो एक दो ऐसे होते हैं लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन वुल्फ वुल्फ पार्किंसन वाइट सिंड्रोम ऑप्शंस बताओ यार मुझे एवी नोड्स एक किसी ने लिखा एसी नोड्स नॉक नदीम आई थिंक यू मेंट समथिंग लाइक एवी नोड राइट ओके ओके आंसर नहीं यार मुझे ऑप्शन बता दो आर द ऑप्शंस करेक्ट टॉल टेंटेड टी वेव्स वाज प्रेजेंट आई नो दैट ब्रॉड क्यूआरएस वाज प्रेजेंट दैट इज आई नो दैट आर द ऑप्शंस करेक्ट ओके कूल लेट्स सॉल्व इट व्हेन इट कम्स टू वुल्फ पार्किंसन वाइट सिंड्रोम वी हैव अ नॉर्मल पीजे इंटरवल The basic concept is that PJ interval is always normal in patients or W P W. Us ka reason maine sab jaaye hua hai yar P R short ho jata hai, Q R S broad ho jata hai. So that is the reason for the PJ being normal in a patient. So it's a A V node dysfunction. Okay, fine. So one option tha A V node dysfunction, which I'm just adding as a problem. See, it is not a A V nodal dysfunction. Even if you are putting the word no, if somebody is saying A V nodal dysfunction, it is an accessory pathway. 
this disease is not a disease of av node no it is a accessory pathway or bundle of kind to extra pathway present hai na which will cause a intermyocyte conduction present and will cause a broad qrs complex in the patient av node deceleration okay whatever but the point is what i'm trying to say is this particular disease is not a disease of the av node it's a disease of the accessory pathway which will cause current to short circuit into the ventricles and then how would the current go in the ventricles it would go into the ventricles via uh, via the uh, via intermyocyte conduction which explains uh, the presence uh, stuti says it was long pj interval present okay doc uh, arushi that's still okay because pj is normal in this condition no? so it can't be a long pj interval it cannot be a short see the point is he did not mention the word normal so if we are coming to agreement over the fact that he did not have the word normal pj interval present option number a can be ruled out and then the qrs becomes broad in this patient so i think uh, that would delta wave hota na aise hota na yaar to wo slope aa jata hai slurring ho jata hai r wave ke upswing mein to isliye rs complex will become relatively broad okay so i think we are coming to the final conclusion for this question the correct answer to this one is option number b and yes uh, dr sharma has again pointed out what i was saying that current is bypassing the av node of the patient it is not going in the av node it goes directly into the ventricles and then you have intermyocyte conduction paper 1 was super hard agree doctor i agree to that okay so if you have questions different from these if you have options different from these most welcome ping me hit hit the email button send button on the email at marva medicine at gmail i'll revert to you there a 40 year old lady presents with difficulty in eating because of persistent dry mouth i think because wo dry mouth kahin na kahin question mein tha dry eyes bhi present tha dental caries bhi wo dal diya cervical lymphadenopathy bhi present hai that's because in patients mein lymphomas develop ho sakte hain so the diagnosis of this patient would be kept as as jogeran syndrome uh, please uh, let me know whether option number a mixed connective tissue disorder was present because most guys were okay correct to conjunctivitis sicka was given in the question okay uh, i mean that's okay doc if he mentioned the term correcto conjunctivitis sicka that makes it even much more easier for us because we tend to read it only here na correcto conjunctivitis sicka is what we read either with s jogeran or we read with rheumatoid arthritis then rheumatoid arthritis would be having uh, joint involvement which was not given in this case considering dry eye correcto conjunctivitis sicka is given and dry mouth is also given dental caries is given the answer is s jogeran syndrome okay so if the options are same we can move on to the subsequent question we done 16 till now we still have uh, about 20 more odd questions to go uh, pleomorphic adenoma be options mein tha okay uh, i think doc we are mixing it up because uh, this is not a parotid enlargement this is cervical lymph nodes which are enlarged in this case but anyway since you have mentioned it i'll just put it up there because he's talking about enlargement of uh, सर्वाइकल एनलार्जमेंट बोल रहा है सो ही कैन पुट अप प्लियोमॉर्फिक एडिनोमा इन द ऑप्शंस ओके फाइन आई मीन आई थिंक क्वेश्चंस आर बीइंग मिक्स सो लेट्स नॉट डू दिस विल स्टिक बाय द इनिशियल वर्जन बट या मेनली बिकॉज़ ऑफ द सर्वाइकल लिम्फ एडिनोपैथी यू आर मिक्सिंग इट फाइन फाइन मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट वन वी हैव दिस चैप हुस क्लासिकल फीचर्स आर ओल्ड मैन विद लो बैक एक एंड देन ही मेंशनड रिगार्डिंग नॉर्मल लेवल्स ऑफ एल्ब्यूमिन बट this proportionately increase gamma globulin x-ray spying showing lytic lesions so we are talking about crab in this particular case because kft is deranged renal failure anemia bony lytic lesions present so this would be a plus muscle disorder this would be a multiple myeloma so uh kya ye recall application mein add honge sir ye to youtube pe rahega and aap yahan se dekh sakte hain i mean uska koi point nahi hai sir usko add karne ka Okay, so seventeen we have sorted. It's a plasma cell dyscaria that we're talking about at the moment, and uh, this would be multiple myeloma as an answer to this the clinical problem because of which the cell of origin is a plasma cell. We sorted for seventeenth. Uh, Let's move on to the eighteenth one, a uh, interesting one. Patient had a road traffic accident, so this time it's not renal tubular acidosis. Always ask multiple myeloma. I mean, unka blood me hai tubercular meningitis, viral meningitis, cardiac tamponade. ये तो ऐसा है कि पूछेगा पूछेगा ओके जी पेशेंट हैड अ रीनल रोड ट्रैफिक एक्सीडेंट एंड इज ब्रॉट विद ब्रैडिकार्डिया विद हाई ब्लड प्रेशर सो दिस इज पुशिंग रिफ्लेक्स इन द पेशेंट एंड देन द जीसीएस इज लेस देन 8 सो वी आर आल्सो हैविंग अ कोमा एनीबॉडी गोइंग इनटू कोमा यू नीड टू सिक्योर द एयरवे स्पॉट ऑन एनीबॉडी हैविंग अ अ पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ इंपेयर्ड एयरवे डिफेंसेस 
we want to prevent aspiration we want to prevent micro aspiration of saliva we want to minimize the chances of this guy deteriorating so we need to spot on go ahead and intubate this guy great answers guys jishu nadeem stuti subesh medico ji hasan everybody is spot on on this one so i i am loving the discussion at the moment because you are getting the questions right so again uh, i can say yes i agree some were difficult but then kai jo hai wo solvable the okay 18th is sorted we move to 19th please help me with the language of this question intubate alag option tha and ipv alag tha okay theek hai doctor sir not an issue but then agar intubation tha to i think that's more than sufficient i mean even if it is separate uh, we'll go by intubation as the first answer okay best fluid intraoperative sir normal saline na sr sr bhejna mujhe questions na ye jo aap abhi bhi bol rahe ho na अदरवाइज में स्नैपशॉट लेना हर बार का लूंगा वो याद नहीं रहेगा पेशेंट प्रेजेंट्स विद थोड़ा लैंग्वेज भी आ जाएगा ना क्वेश्चन का तो इट विल बिकम इजियर फॉर अस टू डिस्कशन सो हिट द सेंड बटन ओके अ पेशेंट विद सोरियासिस डेवलप्ड स्वेलिंग इन द फीट व्हाट वुड बी द कॉजेस इन दिस पर्टिकुलर पेशेंट डॉक्टर राजनन जे आई वुड लव टू आई जस्ट टेक अ क्विक स्क्रीनशॉट ऑफ दिस वन सेंड मी अक्रॉस दिस क्वेश्चन ओके a patient presented with pedal edema raised jvp till the mandible and ascites i mean with pedal edema and ascites i'm thinking liver versus kidney but jvp is going to solve it for me so i'm going to answer this as cardiac failure okay sir we i am happy that uh, something could be useful that's what we are for i mean we our objective is to simplify things so if we found it thankful yes uh, that makes makes the day for me okay fine we sorted for we look at 20th calcitonin is a marker for medullary carcinothyroid i'll skip this question because has already been discussed with the pathologist something about the kidney was also let me know doctor what was mentioned about the kidney yes john lewis i'm coming to that the answer to that one is beers criteria i'll help you solve that question by exclusion so give me another 20 minutes uh, dr john lewis and i'll solve it for you patient on multiple drugs and how to rule that question how to rule out the options i'm going to teach you somebody mentioned nutmeg liver image sir pathologist ne discuss kar liya hai nutmeg liver image was present that was a easier one uh lead is checked sir we check ala in the urine uh, amino lavulanic acid is checked in the urine of the patient okay so we sorted for 20 let's go to 21 answer to which one doctor 20th is c 19th is alpha cardiac failure we are coming to a patient uh, image where ctpa was given please let me know if c c this was the image or something related to this was present or not 60 year old bedridden patient developed sudden onset breathlessness and chest pain ctpa was done and is telling what investigation will be useful to determine the etiology of this patient there is a big thrombus stuck bang in the middle of the pulmonary artery because you are having a big thrombus present the clinical diagnosis of this patient is pulmonary embolism this patient because is bedridden would have developed a deep vein thrombosis there is a clot developing in the soleal veins because we are having clot in the soleal veins in these patients my question to you guys before you answer this as a is was was doppler in the options was doppler for the lower extremities in the options just a yes or a no questions on uh, okay anu i understand you know uh, because i've been doing this for very long i know people go through this emotional trauma every time so i become a little uh, hardened for that but yeah because maybe you sat for this exam for the first time so it's a big emotional trauma i understand that but you will be able to overcome this and i'm very sure that you would be able to compensate with increase in paper 2 okay okay so there was no mention regarding uh, any doppler in the question so that makes it easier the job for me the correct answer for this one is d dimer sa uh, why would we do a d dimer d, d dimer doctor sahab isliye karte na clots ke liye d dimer is done to prove the presence of clots the correct answer for this one is option number a and if d dimer is negative uh, we can rule out pulmonary embolism no 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 you can't rule out but it's a screening test no that will let you know that there is presence of clots in a patient hum to sir d dimer jo the wo we were using that uh, even uh, i mean uh, we are also using d dimer in covid okay interesting 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 duplex imaging okay एक मिनट एक मिनट बट किसी ने बोला नॉन कंप्रेसिबल अल्ट्रासाउंड एक बार ऊपर चला गया चैट में दैट वाज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग आई राइट दैट ऑप्शन गाइस 
non compressible ultrasound please let me know if this was in the options because non compressible ultrasound say non compressible veins in ultrasound we are trying to check for deep vein thrombosis because veins can be compressed but if he says non compressible veins on ultrasound in this patient then it makes the question very interesting and changes that uh, john lewis was saying that okay i only ultrasound was in the option okay okay but did not question mentioned non radiological screening was asked not confirmed you i have not written confirm okay confirm screening fine screening test for this condition fine doctor so we will we'll still answer screening test for this condition as d dimer assay I mean, that's the initial test uh, that's a blood test that we'll be doing in this patient so it's okay sir screening question to mean screening hai. so screening investigation would be used to confirm uh, screening investigation will be used to uh, identify the etiology i'll remove the word confirm from there because ctp is already done so there is no point of uh, saying the word confirm there but uh, the remaining part is what i've understood there was a question of pulmonary embolism the etiology is deep vein thrombosis we need to pr prove the presence of clots and t-dimer assay will do the uh, job for us if it asks us where is the clots coming from then we can either do a doppler and uh, or we can do an ultrasound on which non-compressible veins can be seen is d-dimer needed after the ct is done uh, see doctor that's what i'm saying now if you look at the other options you can easily rule them out coagulogram will not tell you regarding the etiology mra will not be useful if you have already done a ctp in a question and if it is echocardiography echocardiography will only tell you about right ventricular failure in a patient so the point is if you look at the other options i agree to the point that you put put it up there but then at the same time d-dimer will help us uh स्क्रीनिंग जैसा नहीं था सर ये हमेशा ऐसे ही होता है मतलब ये ना ऐसे नेस्टी सा पेपर बनाते हैं आ, आ, क्यों करते हैं मुझे नहीं पता आई मीन एथिकली दैट शुड नॉट बी द केस आई मीन फुल सपोर्ट फॉर यू गाइस बट जो भी है मतलब फेस वैल्यू पे वी नीड टू क्रैक दिस क्वेश्चंस ओके लेट्स मूव ऑन टू ट्वेंटी no d dimer will not tell us about the progression of treatment it will just tell us the etiology it will just tell us that yes there is a uh, there is a thromboembolic state present in the patient okay moving to the next one he mentions a 23 year old patient with history of flank pain fatigue and history of red color urine and he says on investigation uh, there is more than 20 rbcs present somebody mentioned the word smoky urine here smoky urine is again a feature of hematuria uh, that's because jab rbcs burst nahi honge then it's going to be smoky urine and when the rbcs will burst it will change it to reddish or a brown color present uh, patient is about 23 years of age okay it was age was lesser okay something like if you can just comment 10 year old okay great so 10 year old patient uh, with smoky urine and then there is rbcs which are documented the main feature is dysmorphic rbc is present i mean every time you read the word dysmorphic rbc it would immediately tell you that there is a glomerular bleed present and uh, i mean that's the key word for this question considering that uh, there is glomerular bleed present that would make us the diagnosis of psgn uh, maybe if psgn was not in the options then other possibilities an alternative term for it that would be nephritic syndrome and uh, yes no bacteria microscopy showed no bacteria fine that is because is trying to rule out possibility of a uti in a patient and anyway if there is uti present there would be presence of pus cells as present also okay so the pus cells if they are present are going to be much much higher 2 to 4 pus cells per high power field very nicely framed question he wants you to think in terms of both psgn as well as a uti uh, considering the fact that patient is having a predominant hematuria we first should think in possibility of stones if it is not stones it is dysmorphic rbcs which is the catch word in the question as long as this phrase was given as long as dysmorphic rbcs are given it will nail the diagnosis as a source of a glomerular bleed so glomerulonephritis yeah doctor i used a short term no psgn is post epigonal glomerulonephritis so vikram i i take your point there and foamy urine we know that that's a feature that you encounter in nephrotic syndrome so again if the software was jumbling up questions where they gave you a question of a 10 year old child foamy urine proteinuria present edema present scrotal swelling present that's when you think in terms of minimal chain disease 
But considering this, it's an unlikely possibility. Another option that came up in this particular question was Wilms tumor. Uh, Wilms tumor should be having a renal mass. Along with the hematuria, there should be a renal mass and that should be by manual, by manually palpable. Okay, okay. Uh, Lakshmi, even if dysmorphic RBCs are removed, considering the presentation of a child with hematuria, and more, more importantly, you know, there's a flank pain present in this case. I'll first think in terms of stones and then think in terms of glomerulonephritis in a patient. So nephritic syndrome is uh, is more going to be possible. E EXTT, uh, please tell me if it is going to be, okay, I'll remove Wilms tumor. Please let me know what was the magnitude of proteinuria given in this question. I'll just wait for a few seconds before I move on. Let me know the magnitude of proteinuria for this one because the nephritic proteins will also come, no? But the magnitude has to be less than 3.5 grams. Will streamer at Adia? No issues. No issues. Okay. Any proteinuria which is given? Throat infection may not occur in a patient uh, or patient may not recall that history, you know, because it will occur four to six, four to six uh, prominent earlier. Okay, proteinuria is two plus. That's again making it unlikely to be nephrotic, right? So let's evaluate the options once again, okay? Let's go by the options once again. If it is nephrotic syndrome, you should be having proteinuria four plus or you should mention more than 3.5 gram proteins. If it is UTI in a patient, then it should be causing not one, but possible multiple episodes in a patient. And more importantly, more importantly, if it is going to be a calculus, uh, if it is uh, going to be a UTI with a calculus, then the number of RBCs should also be more. I mean, UTI with a stone, then the number of RBCs should be, uh, number of WBCs should be relatively more in a patient. Proteinuria 1 to 2 plus. Okay, I'll make it a range here. I'll make it a 1, one to 2 plus range here. So, guys, the point is, we are stuck between either it's going to be nephritic syndrome, that's one possibility, or even if you say, yeah, sir, 20 is mild hematuria only. 20 is mild hematuria only. If I say uh, gross hematuria, that would be like uh, more than 1,000 RBCs per high power field. Okay. Fine. So we sorted for this one, guys. This would be blood seen in naked eye given. Yep, yep, yep. So it's predominantly RBC is present. That would make it uh, first thing in terms of glomerulonephritis in a patient. Moving to the next one, we are talking about a male with history of COPD, hypertension, diabetes, mellitus on multiple drugs. Criteria used to avoid use of the certain drugs. So we know Jones criteria is for rheumatic fever, Light's criteria is for pleural effusion, Duke's criteria are for infective endocarditis. A pure question of uh, MCI, which is based on exclusion capability. Uh, Okay. Yeah, never heard of beer being. Uh, okay. The correct answer for this one is option number A. No, guys, I think all of you studied. It is the methodology of studying that matters. Uh, we may recommend Kratom exclusion capabilities, which people don't do. So, I mean, uh, that is uh, studying is not the only way to crack this exam. It is also to learn exclusion capabilities in the exam. That's the key. Usse wo do options to hote, wo rule out ho the correct answer for this one is option number A. Great, great. Okay, Nisha, uh, just frame the question and let me know. Vinod, uh, just like I said, if there was no RBC and foamy urine, then I think that there is a nephrotic syndrome ki possibility. Rakh sakte I mean, the software can give two options for the same question. And if there is no hematuria present, yeah, but then the proteinuria has to be 4 plus then. 4 plus proteinuria. Wo proteinuria ka magnitude to magnitude of the nephrotic ke liye. Okay, G, fine. We sorted for 23, 22 is was up for good debate. We move to 24. Which of the following drugs is least useful for thalamic degenerate syndrome? Basically, thalamus is the pain relay center in the patient. And in this particular patient, uh, they would be burning pain. They would be searing pain. Patient will say as if somebody has poured acid over the hand or somebody has poured boiling water over the hand. So there would be basically neuropathic pain experienced by the patient. Neuropathic pain does not respond to painkillers. Neuropathic pain will respond to tricyclic antidepressants, gabapentin in the patient. Cannabinoids can be used in this patient, but painkillers are not yoga. I mean, the point is, if it is going to be neuropathic pain, then neuropathic pain is... Sir, Wilms tumor ka question is different, so don't mix it. 
uh, neuropathic pain does not respond to analgesics. The correct answer for 24 is option number A. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, Jishu, you have to go through the stroke chapter uh, and you'll be able to pick this up. This would be causing uh, 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 the involvement of the thalamus, no? Because up thalamus in the thalamus is the pain relay center. So, it's neuropathic pain. Ho okay, carbamazepine. Not an issue, sir. Carbamazepine is also used in this case. So, if it is not cannabinoids, still carbamazepine. Uh, Bhavjit Walia, thank you for the inputs. Uh, directly aspirin. Likha tha. Okay. Fine. And uh, answer to this is still option number A. Instead of cannabinoids, it's carbamazepine. Uh, carbamazepine, bialproate, yes, sub use of neuropathic pain. Moving to 25, which of the following will help in making a diagnosis of bronchial asthma? History is a diagnosis, but it's not a V's, so V's can be due to focal obstruction, collapse in a lung also. The best way would be that we check for FEV1 before and after. Before and after. And uh, we will be using FEV1 values in this particular case. The correct answer for this one is option number B. Uh, HRCT is the investigation of choice for diseases like interstitial lung disease in a patient. Uh, HRCT will help you in identifying pneumoconiosis in a patient. It will help you in identifying bronchitis in a patient. Those structural diseases are there. But asthma is a reactive airway disease. Okay, fine. Even if it is not HRCT, chest X-ray. Still, I mean, chest X-ray, so today there is no diagnosis. So it is basically FVV1 showing an increment which should be more than 12%. Uh, Dipanjali, that does not change the answer anyway. I mean, even if aspirin is not given analgesic, the point is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are not going to work. So we are sorted for question number 25. The answer is beta. Yes, one more question coming up, Mehta, for bronchial asthma. Coming up on the screen just in a few seconds. Anji, I asthma ka start easy se karto. Uh, this question ka framing mujhe batana thoda sa carefully. 20 year old male who's an IV drug user presents with fever for one week. Fever ka due, uh, magnitude kitna tha? I mean, somebody said 38, 35.5. So let me know in the comment. Work up TLC is grossly elevated. Blood culture report is spreading spots. Ye rot spots tha, ye plain spots tha. Ye batana hai apne mujhe. And then he has asked how many minor dukes criteria are satisfied in this case. So before I mark that, uh, Okay, it was more than 12%. He got off. It's okay. I mean, even if it is more than 12%, it is sufficient for diagnosis. The concept is 12% or more is bronchial asthma. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. You are right. Uh, BP was high. Okay. In this particular case, blood pressure was given to be elevated. Respiratory rate was 22 per minute. Okay. Yes, Imran, I'm coming to that question of rheumatic also. Give me me a second and the only spot and culture given in the question it was 0 1 2 3 okay fine okay ji. so question asked minor criteria is that a yes please type y in the comment box is that a is it a yes he asked about minor dips criteria please comment in the chat box okay minor dips criteria so first minor dukes criteria is IV drug usage. If you go through, he is written predisposition. Predisposition can be either a IV drug user or some structural heart disease. Second minor criteria present in this question is presence of fever. Was fever fever magnitude given? Fever magnitude given. Please comment in the chat box regarding the magnitude of fever. 38, 30.5, kuch bhi value likha tha fever ka ya sirf fever likha tha. Please comment in the chat box. Fever or fever with temperature value. I'm coming to the answer, sir. Nadim, give me a second. Okay, 38.5. So that makes it two criteria right now. The third criteria is presence of spots present. Even if he's not mentioning the word Roth spots, even if he's saying the word Roth spots present, it would whether Roth spot likha ya spot likha, fundus findings ne dehdiya. Blood culture report is pending because blood culture is a major criteria, guys. Blood culture is a major criteria for diagnosis of infective endocarditis. The correct answer for this one will turn out to be option number D. That is three of the minor criteria are present in this. Zero was in the options issue. Yes, I've incorporated that. The correct answer is three. I'll mention the three once again. IV drug usage. Let's look at it. No, if you listen to the minor criteria, minor criteria 
is predisposition. There should be elevated temperature in a patient and then there is rot spots in a patient. Those three things are present. Spots they did not mention. Okay, Lakshmi, let me know what was given in place of that. I think fundus was given. Because that will make it two other ways. But the concept is still clear that you need to pick up the points there. Uh, answer key. Sir, in India, uh, <laughs> so, so let's not get into that. Okay, ji. fine, fine. So considering the fact that uh, the data is IV drug usage and presence of uh, fever present in a patient, that will make it too, sir. So, okay, SR, can you comment quickly on this one? I'm waiting for your count for this one. No spots given? No spots. SR, can you come in and quickly let me know? No problems, guys. If it is no spots, then we'll make it a count or two. Not a problem. Elevated temperature. Okay, that's good. Lakshmi said temperature. I will drug user high BP elevated TLC in a patient. Okay, understood. Okay, fine. I think solve okay. Two out of three. If there spot, nahi tha, to, uh, agar spot, nahi tha, to two will be Spots present, then three will be Otherwise, baki the concept of uh, this one is right. So I think we have sorted for uh, the minor criteria for rheumatic fever, uh, minor criteria, major criteria for Luke's criteria for infective endocarditis have to be remembered. Coming to the next one, uh, reversibility of airflow obstruction uh, in asthma is defined as FE1 change pre and post bronchodilator would be a value more than 12%. So there are two questions on bronchial asthma and uh, I have sorted both of them for you. The correct answer for this one is marked right now. I think we can uh, move on to the next one. Yes. And somebody remarked, you know, in my chat, he said, sir, an essay type question, a very long question. So I requested him, you know, write me, write, write down uh, the options for me, uh, write down the text of the question for me. So a uh, 30 year old lady presented with the uh, recurrent episodes of epistaxis and perennial runny nose. Uh, it's a she who has been passing uh, cola color urine off and on. And uh, there is workup of hemoptysis being done for multiple cavitatory lesions. This I'm sure was present, multiple cavitatory lesions. So lower respiratory tract is getting involved. Recurrent episodes of URTI and epistaxis. So, I mean, URT features present. And there's a kidney involvement in the patient as well. Considering the three things, upper respiratory tract, lower respiratory tract, and the kidney, we are knowing that this question is on vasculitis because vasculitis is one disease that can affect any organ in the body. So there was an essay on Wegener's granulomatosis. The new name for Wegener's granulomatosis, as you are all aware of, is uh, granulomatosis with polyangitis. And thereby the correct answer for this would be option number beta. That would be uh, C. Anka as the best way for diagnosis in this case. Uh, double stranded DNA in the options also. Very interesting. Okay, multiple cavitations in multiple questions. Okay, we sorted for this one, guys. Uh, this is Wegener's granulomatosis. That's the older name. The current one is granulomatosis with polyangiitis and Cienka was helping a solvent. Adenocarcinoma, let me know the option then. It's anti-GBM ASO titer. Okay, Shaukat, not a problem. Make it two then. Uh, uh, Mr. Streptococcus, maybe you joined our chat late, but uh, unlikely that uh, that question would have been present because that was asked in FMG 2022 also. It was anti. Uh, let's see. Let's see the comment. Which antibody, Dr. Dhruv? Can you just type that again instead of P anchor? Okay, anti CCP. Fine. Thank you so much. Anti-CCP is anyway for rheumatoid arthritis, so we can solve it out. And double-stranded DNA. Cool. Thank you for the options for this one. The answer still remains unchanged. It is CNK. We are sorted on 28. Let's move to 29. A very interesting one. I would love your inputs for the coagulogram in this patient. Uh, questions are not a PG level. Sir, you have Discussions on Oge to PG may the negative marking with the paper to same irak the Saraj Kalbuna, man Palibi Bola, Dr. Akila Raj. I've said that earlier also that they keep the same paper, but they keep the same paper negative marking on for the test. 
13 year old girl presents with increased bleeding post dental extraction and usko hemostatic measures lagaye the matlab since hemostatic local measures failed jaise doctor ne uska a uh, uh, packing kiya hoga adrenaline soaked gauze se but if the local uh, uh, hemostatic measures will fail or bleeding fir bhi ho raha to coagulogram karaya and the coagulogram of this patient ptt and aptt normal and he says uh, pregnant woman postpartum hemorrhage this one no doctor it's a 13 year old girl with bleeding and post dental extraction case i mean von willebrand disease presenting at postpartum hemorrhage nahi hota okay हाँ जी हाँ जी तो पीटी नॉर्मल होता है ना सर इसमें बेसिकली बिकॉज प्रोथ्रोमिन टाइम इज नॉर्मल इन दिस केस प्राइमरली वाइट इज नॉर्मल इज बिकॉज वॉन वेलेब्रेंट फैक्टर इज नॉट डिपेंडेंट और नॉट रिलेटेड टू प्रोथ्रोमिन टाइम फैक्टर एट और फैक्टर नाइन जो है वो पीडियाट्रिक एज ग्रुप में चाइल्डहुड में प्रेजेंट करेंगे यूजली आई मीन दिस वुड बी अ इन्फेंट अबाउट वन ईयर ऑफ एज एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम इट वुड बी अ नी स्वेलिंग और एंकल स्वेलिंग दैट वुड बी द प्रेजेंटेशन I mean, hemophilia presents in a boy baby. That's one gender. Here he mentioned girl. So one, I can say that why I'm ruling out option number A in this case is never have knee swelling. Yes, I think that would be mentioned in the question. Never had knee swelling. That will help me in saying that this this is von Willebrand disease. Never knee swelling or never knee bruising present. Good. This is the first episode. The girl has undergone a dental extraction. और उसके दांत निकालने के बाद में ब्लीडिंग ज्यादा हो रहा है ये क्लासिकल प्रेजेंटेशन है वन बिलेपरेंट डिजीज का आप क्यू बैंक में चेक करो या प्लेटलेट डिसऑर्डर का जो वीडियो है उसको सुनोगे उसमें लास्ट में ये डिस्कस्ड है दैट इज दे वुड बी या नो हेमार्थ्रोसिस प्रेजेंट दैट्स द स्टैंडर्ड प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ वन बिलेपरेंट डिजीज द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस वन इज ऑप्शन नंबर डी विटामिन के डेफिशेंसी तो इसलिए रूल आउट हो जाता है बिकॉज प्रोथ्रोमिन टाइम इज नॉर्मल एंड ए एंड बी कैन बी नॉर्मल ओके डॉक आई मीन द एपेटिटी पार्ट कैन बी डिरेंज इन इन दीज पेशेंट्स द मेन कॉन्सेप्ट इज Yes, in the question it was mentioned there is no bruising ever in the knee of the patient, which tells you it is unlikely to be a hemophilia. Plus hemophilia in a girl. I mean, could so chana yar research based presentation to banana ni na hemophilia in a girl ka presentation. He's gonna talk about a. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, hemophilia in a girl is like a is a very rare presentation. So we have to talk about routine things. The correct answer for this one is. Uh, Yeah, Ashley, that's what I'm saying. It it's gonna be normal. The knee swelling, there is no a uh, knee swelling in a patient, and at the same time, the coagulogram is normal. That's why it is von Willebrand disease. Sir, why it may not be possible? Why it may not be possible? Okay. The correct answer for this one is option number D. Uska logic me. Firse bol raha hu. Girls me hemophilia nahi present karta sir. Or PT normal hai. <laughs> okay. ओके संदीप सेज कि लास्ट क्वेश्चन में जीबीएम नहीं हो सकता है नो बिकॉज किडनी इन्वॉल्वमेंट है ना किडनी इन्वॉल्वमेंट सॉरी इसमें अपर रेस्पेक्ट ट्रैक्ट इन्वॉल्व है ना बिकॉज अगर वो ये मैंने ट्राइड समझाया हुआ एक्चुअली ना कि अपर रेस्पेक्ट ट्रैक्ट इन्वॉल्व है इन इन पेशेंट्स ऑफ एंटी बिस्मेंट मेमर इन डिसऑर्डर यू डो नॉट हैव अपर रेस्पेक्ट ट्रैक्ट इन्वॉल्वमेंट Okay, ji. So we are sorted for this one. The option will turn out to be option number D. Uh, I'll say the points once again. Knee swelling to tha sir. Knee swelling ke aage likha tha. There was no knee swelling present in a patient. Tera saal pe hemophilia nahi present karta sir. Hemophilia ki jo matlab it was age age ko to agree karte ho. Age ke options to agree karte ho. नो 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 एब्सोल्युटली नॉट सर अगर वो हेमोफिलिया होगा तो तेरह साल पे कैसे प्रेजेंट कर जाएगा और गर्ल में कैसे प्रेजेंट करेगा ये बताओ ना मुझे फैक्टर सेवन ऑप्शन फैक्टर सेवन का डेफिशिएंसी सर कहाँ होता है फैक्टर सेवन का कॉमन क्लिनिकली जो मिलता है दैट इज नॉट अ फैक्टर सेवन डेफिशियंसी ना तो वो तो वैसे भी आंसर नहीं हो सकता डेंटल एक्सट्रैक्शन था चलो फैक्टर सेवन मान लिया आपकी मैंने बात फैक्टर सेवन तो विटामिन के डिपेंडेंट होता है ना फैक्टर सेवन जो है मान लो विटामिन के हटा देते हैं तो फैक्टर सेवन जो होता है वो तो विटामिन के डिपेंडेंट होता है मुझे ये बताओ कि डेंटल एक्सट्रैक्शन था या नहीं था फॉरगेट अबाउट एवरीथिंग एल्स मुझे बस कमेंट बॉक्स में यस या नो लिख दो डेंटल एक्सट्रैक्शन के बाद में ब्लीड था या नहीं था वेटिंग फॉर योर कमेंट
तो यार डेंटल एक्सट्रैक्शन के बाद में अगर कोई ब्लीडिंग डिसऑर्डर प्रेजेंट करता है तो वन वेले ब्रांड करता है अब ये बात जो है इसको अगर आप थोड़ा सा प्लेटलेट डिसऑर्डर को सुनोगे तो सॉल्व हो जाएगा बाकी सारे डिसऑर्डर्स में जॉइंट स्वेलिंग होती है लेकिन वन वेले ब्रांड डिजीज का प्रेजेंटेशन यही होता है देखो मेजोरिटी ऑफ पीपल आर मेंशनिंग दैट आई मीन मैं ऐसे बोलूंगा मोर देन 70 टू 80 परसेंट पीपल इन द कमेंट हैव क्लियरली मेंशन डेंटल एक्सट्रैक्शन गिवन इन अ गर्ल एज नहीं भी याद है कोई बात नहीं है ना छोटे बच्चे में तो दांत निकालेंगे नहीं चार साल के बच्चे में तो दांत निकालेंगे नहीं तीन साल के बच्चे में तो दांत निकालेंगे तो कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी नहीं है सर मेरे हिसाब से दिस इज अ क्लियर बट हम कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी बना देंगे इसको अगर हमने इसके ऊपर और टाइम स्पेंड किया तो अदरवाइज स्टैंडर्ड जो डेटा वो यही वाला ओके प्रियंका लेट मी नो the 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 language of the question pregnant pregnant lady lady with with postpartum or dental extraction yeah girl थीक है, सर, वो तो ठीक है okay got it got it got it good good Vandana has cleared this ना कि लड़की है उसको पीपीएच हुआ था पांच साल पहले dental extraction के बाद में हुआ था fine 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 got the question कि वो पहले Got the gist of the question. Confuse करने के लिए उसने लिखा है आंसर फिर भी वही है चेंज नहीं होगा उसने बोला एक प्रेगनेंट लेडी है उसको पीपीएच हुआ है और उससे पहले जब वो गर्ल थी तो उसे डेंटल एक्सट्रैक्शन हुआ तो मैं मॉडिफाई कर लूंगा सर इसको थैंक यू फॉर द इनपुट बट द डेटा स्टिल रिमेन्स द सेम ओके यस वंदना इज परफेक्टली राइट मैं क्वेश्चन समराइज कर देता हूँ फॉर एवरीबडी अ प्रेगनेंट लेडी हैज कम विद उसको पीपीएच हो गया और कुछ साल पहले उसका जब डेंटल एक्सट्रैक्शन हुआ था तो उसे एक्सेसिव ब्लीडिंग हुआ था एंड शी वॉज Having this problem, I mean, उसको पहले भी excessive bleeding हो चुका है So we need to consider, can it be hemophilia? Hemophilia in a woman is unlikely. So factor एट factor नाइन are unlikely. PT normal है तो factor सेवन answer नहीं हो सकता है which was coming in the chat. So the only thing that is left is von Willebrand. So I think we are solved for sorted for this one. And let's move on to the next one. Good, we had a discussion. अगला question पढ़ के बताओ मुझे did it come? पहली बात तो only because only one person commented that. you know there was a question on calculation of sodium then i'll do the mathematics for this question okay ji fine aaya tha nahi bhi sir itna bada question to koi bol nahi sakta main calculation mein bataunga calculation mein bataunga <laughs> इतना बड़ा क्वेश्चन नवर यस में चल रहा है 110 सौ दिया था कैलकुलेशन के लिए ओके जी फाइन 110 कर लेते हैं अच्छा फ्लूडो कॉर्टिसोन का डोज पूछा था कॉन्स सेंट्रो में दिस वाज अ सेपरेट क्वेश्चन ओके कॉन्स फ्लूडो कॉर्टिसोन डोज डॉ के कमेंट कर देना मुझे ना कॉन्स में पूछा था डोज सर आई मीन एडिसन में पूछा होगा ना फ्लूडो का हाँ जी हाँ जी डोज ऑफ हाइड्रोकोटिसोन फाइन थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दैट इनपुट फॉर डोज ऑफ हाइड्रोकोटिसोन दैट इज टू बी गिवन टू पेशेंट ऑफ एडिसन डिजीज कॉन्स में तो हाइड्रोकोटिसोन नहीं देंगे सर चलो अगले बार में मैं सॉल्व कर देता हूँ ये वाला जो क्वेश्चन है कंसिडरिंग दिस वैल्यूज उसमें करना क्या होता है सिंपल सा है कि द फॉर्मूला इज टोटल बॉडी वाटर इन मतलब टोटल करेक्शन कैसे होगा जो भी वैल्यू दे रखी है उसको 140 से सब्ट्रैक्ट कर देना एंड कंसिडरिंग फीमेल है 40 ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल है तो मल्टीप्लिकेशन फैक्टर 0.5 होता है तो अगर मैं इस मैथमेटिक्स पे जाऊंगा तो आंसर विल वर्कआउट टू बी टोटल वैल्यू के लिए दैट वुड वर्कआउट टू बी फोर्टी इंटू पॉइंट फाइव इज ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी इंटू ट्वेंटी वुड बी फोर हंड्रेड तो आंसर यहाँ पे मैंने दिया है दैट इज फोर हंड्रेड बेस्ड ऑन टोटल करेक्शन टू बी गिवन टू दिस केस ये जो करेक्शन मैंने कैलकुलेट करी है यहाँ पे ये टोटल है ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स में नहीं क्योंकि ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स में जो करेक्शन देते हैं अगर सारा एक साथ दे देंगे दैन द पेशेंट कैन डेवलप ऑस्मोटिक डीमेलिनेशन सिंड्रोम बिकॉज दिस इज क्रॉनिक हाइपोनेट्रीमिया पेशेंट इज एडमिटेड फॉर समथिंग लाइक अप्रॉक्सीमेटली वीक विद माई विद मी इन द हॉस्पिटल इन क्रॉनिक हाइपोनेट्रीमिया वी डू नॉट डू अ फास्ट करेक्शन वी डू अ स्लो करेक्शन इफ इज सेज टोटल करेक्शन इट वर्क आउट टू बी डी इफ इज सेज ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स में कितना करेक्शन देंगे तो ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स में जो करेक्शन देंगे That would be only 10 point increase तो मैं 120 से 130 ले जाएंगे 110 था तो 120 ले जाएंगे 10 point का increment है that would make it 200. Okay जी not a issue sir I just told I mean some because some people saying it came so I put it up. Let's move on to the next one. Next वाला था sir. Let's focus on the next one at hand. This one was surely there. 
a lady presented with recurrent episodes of pain and pressure sensation between her eye and then usko jo proptosis develop ho raha that proptosis is coming with valsava maneuver okay nitin sir we take an average of 140 na <laughs> चलो कोई नहीं लेट्स नॉट फाइव फाइट अवर्ड सॉफ्टवेयर में पॉसिबिलिटी है कि जम्बल क्वेश्चंस आते हैं तो कई लोगों को नहीं भी प्रेजेंट हो सकता लेट्स लेट्स डू दिस गाइस क्विकली थर्टी सेवन ईयर ओल्ड लेडी एंड द प्रोप्टोसिस इज इंक्रीजिंग विद वर्ल्स मेनूवर यस यस लेट्स नॉट फोकस ऑन द आंसर क्वेश्चन पढ़ो सर वॉज देर अ क्वेश्चन विद सेट वर्ल्स मेनूवर से उसकी आंख फूल जाती है रमेश थे वॉज नॉर्मल पीटी एंड एपेटिटी या आप नॉर्मल पीटी इज अ फीचर ऑफ वन वेल ब्रांड डिजीज ऑर्बिटल डरमोइड ओके ओके दिस कैन बी ऑर्बिटल डरमोइड ऑल्सो चलो जी फाइन तो अब आंसर बोलू मैं वालसावा मनूवर जब करेंगे वालसावा मनूवर करेंगे तो वेन्स का प्रेशर बढ़ जाता है और कोई भी अगर वैस्कुलर मेलफॉर्मेशन होगी तो वो प्रोमिनेंट हो जाएगी द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑर्बिटल वायरस दिस इज अस्कुलर डिफॉर्म वैस्कुलर डिफेक्ट with relation to the eyeball that when you are making the patient do a valsava maneuver that is breathing out against a closed blood test it will result in development of that pro prominence coming up so it would be it would be a orbital varices the correct answer for this one is option number a venous pressure valsava se basically concept yahi hai ki venous pressure will increase okay orbital hemangioma also ab mujhe batao uh jessica i'll just come to the query that you put up uh, let me know whether orbital varices and hemangioma both were in the options or not yes guys quickly my question is orbital varices and orbital hemangioma in the options the answer would still remain the same it's a orbital varices only because orbital hemangioma is not affected by doing a valsava maneuver sir dekho if it's a vascular malformation no both were there that's what jisu is saying so even if both are present main isko tumor ko hata bhi deta hu i'll make it a hemangioma a orbital hemangioma still then orbital varices are the ones which are to be given uh, the first why i mean why are we focusing on orbital varices is mainly because venous pressure will increase with valsava maneuver that's the main crux of this question and will make the answer as option number a okay ji sir aisa nahi ho sakta hai वैरसिस के बिना तो आंसर ही नहीं होगा ना या तो ये क्वेश्चन ही नहीं था क्योंकि अगर प्रोप्टोसिस पे इफ वेलसावा इज कॉजिंग प्रोप्टोसिस देर इज ओनली वन पॉसिबिलिटी इन मेडिकल साइंस तो अगर आप कहते हो वैरसिस ऑप्शन में नहीं था तो फिर ये क्वेश्चन में नहीं था ओके okay, एक कमेंट आई मिस्ड डॉक्टर सेड हाउ हीट वुड बी लॉस फ्रॉम द बॉडी ड्यूरिंग स्वेटिंग डॉक्टर इवेपोरेशन नो स्वेट विल इवेपोरेट फ्रॉम द बॉडी पसीना जो आता है हमें तो वो इवेपोरेट होता है तो कूलिंग होता है ना तो आंसर वुड बी इवेपोरेशन ई एक्स टी टी आई थिंक पुट अप दैट क्वेश्चन या आई थिंक जेसिका आल्सो पुट अप जेसिका द सारी आई हैव आंसर्ड योर क्वेरी ई एक्स टी टी आई हैव आंसर्ड योर क्वेरी ओके जी ओके अब ये कह रहे डेजर्ट मोड में ओके जी फाइन so take a snapshot i'll we'll work out the options for that question and we'll we'll work it out subsequently the answer to this one is sorted i think 32 is also sorted what can be given in celiac guru options pe ladai chal rahi thi to aapne agar mera video suna to maine bataya ki inko maze de sakte hain because maze is not available round the clock in india so for low cost patient in india aap rice dete ho aur rice se banta poha to hum poha de sakte hain suji aur semolina is maida aur maida jo hota hai wo wheat se banta hai and wheat is not given in this patient so i think this question is so pretty pretty sorted out and uh, the correct answer for this one is option number c isko solve kar lena okay 47 degree in the desert bhumika rajesh i would require the entire question in detail because somebody just said sweating se heat loss kaise hoga that's going to be evaporation but rice option was present so we can solve it a mole i have sorted it out even if it's a mangioma where is to be given a preference okay let's uh, do the last one for this particular session yep uh, a elderly patient is presented with focal seizures rice pulao is mentioned 
yeah doc whether you say poha pulao oh i have mentioned whatever was in the options so i think that that can solve the answer to this question <laughs> yes sir that's a very interesting content because i think uh, they don't use the word poha some some in some places so suji i understand i understand if you are from i mean maybe from the southern part of india then you may not be using words like suji and poha so i agree rice is the answer anyway chalo ji last one for today and uh, this is about the elderly patient with focal seizures pehle to ye bata dena question tha ya nahi because otherwise ye hota sir ye question hi nahi tha elderly patient presents with focal seizures ct shows a multiple ring enhancing granulomas and uh, this is about neurocystic sarcosis and uh, he says what is not to be done in the patient so because there is a cerebral edema or vasogenic cerebral edema in this patient we will be giving steroids we have to treat we have to give anti edema treatment we have to go for seizure control in this patients using carbamazepine lekin isme anti helminthic treatment nahi dete hain immediately immediately we do not give anti helminthic treatment because if you kill the ones right now the the contents of the worm will cause can cause anaphylactic shock they will increase the cerebral edema so pehle hum cerebral edema ko kam karenge and then we'll use anti helminthic treatment the answer to this is option number d You can listen to the neurocystic sarcosis treatment as well, where I've described that first forty-eight hours, may we do not give albendazole to these patients. First forty-eight hours, we do not, we do not give albendazole to these patients. Ah, uh, degree sweating that would be evaporation, doctor. If it is sweating, for friends roaming around in the desert, fifteen percent humidity, and yes, Abhishek, I was looking for this question. Epinephrine, yes, it would be epinephrine intramuscular. Repeat it till the patient reaches the hospital. Yes, thank you, thank you, Abhishek. I was looking for this question, uh, a very interesting one, which Abhishek has mentioned that it is an anaphylactic shock. It was epinephrine IV. It was I am epinephrine once. It was repeated I am epinephrine till patient reaches the hospital. It is it is repeated till the hospital. So I think we are we are good to go with that also. And yeah, yeah, I'll include that in my discussion, doc. The the question that you put up. the anaphylaxis management question that has been put up so i'll add that it is repeated shots of adrenaline kyunki yaar ek bar denge ho sakta hai absorb na ho there's a hypotension in the patient no so it may not be absorbed so you might have to go in for uh, repeating that also and drooling of saliva uh okay sir okay okay fine fine uh, do, do let me know the remaining options for this one also so i think we are sorted for the current session these are the set of questions that i have got till now i'm still getting feed on a couple of other ones about two to three more questions that we'll uh, sort it out subsequently and we'll be posting it so thank you so much guys for your input and uh, you know staying with me this long after the paper does decrease in glucose lead to increase in epinephrine yes john lewis it does it does uh टिप्स फॉर दिसंबर एग्जाम यार देखो ये आई ओपनर है मैं तो यही बोलूंगा कि मतलब डोंट टेक इट इजी एंड ट्राई टू फोकस ऑन लॉजिकल क्वेश्चंस फॉर दोज ऑफ यू हु आर डिजेक्टेड फॉर दोज ऑफ यू हु आर गोना बी सिटिंग फॉर दिसंबर माय सिंपल एडवाइस इज अगर अभी पढ़ाई नहीं हो रही है मेरे यूट्यूब चैनल पे देर आर लॉट ऑफ फ्री 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 तो खैर होता ही है यूट्यूब मेरा मेरा मतलब है कि उस पर लाइव सेशन अवेलेबल है लाइव सेशन करके एक प्ले है आप उसको सुनना उससे आपको एक्सक्लूजन स्किल मिलेगा माई ऑब्जेक्टिव इज सिंपल सर पढ़ाई सब करते हैं इट इज ओनली विट इन टू ऑप्शन प्रैक्टिस तो आप थोड़ा अगर उनको सुन लोगे तो आपका थॉट प्रोसेस रिफाइन हो जाएगा आप सब इंटेलिजेंट बच्चे हो आई नो दैट यू आर ऑल इंटेलिजेंट यू आर ऑल हार्ड वर्किंग सब ने बारह बारह घंटे पढ़ाई करी है लास्ट मंथ में आई एग्री टू दैट बट कहीं ना कहीं जाके स्टूडेंट्स को लगता है नहीं यार वो सफिशियंट नहीं था तो वो सफिशिएंट नहीं था जो माइंड में आता है उसको सॉल्व करने का तरीका है दैट फोकस ऑन एक्सक्लूजन कैपेबिलिटी सो कीप कीप इट अप गाइस एंड अडिनो कार्सिनोमा यू गॉड ब्लेस यू टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई मीन थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ऑल योर प्रेजेंस फॉर योर प्रेजेंस इन दिस सेशन स्पेशली आफ्टर द एग्जाम स्टूडेंट्स नहीं आते हैं कि छोड़े यार देखेंगे यू नो काय को टाइम वेस्ट करना एंड पार्टी करते हैं चिल करते हैं यू गाइस आर कम हियर सो आई रियली वेरी अप्रिशिएट दैट फ्रॉम द बॉटम ऑफ माय हार्ट दैट यू आर कम हेयर एंड लिसन टू मी एंड 
yes uh, for those of you who are preparing uh, for the subsequent exam it's just daily daily hard work so it was great i i loved the georgian food the hospitality and everything uh, nelson syndrome and precor mutant okay doc i'll 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 add that subsequent thank you guys god bless you signing off dr billa thank you so much bye bye god bless you